behind the items, which, which is what I really enjoy. Various monkey mobiles that were released through the years. These are all the bubble gum cards that we have. Joe just keeps getting more and more stuff. It's crazy. I'd say our collection is one of the larger collections in the whole country. This corner over here is probably the pinnacle of our collection, at least to this point, since I don't think we'll ever be able to actually find a real monkey mobile to drive around. Um, this is a poster from the movie Head, um, The Monkees Did. It's actually one of the probably only three that we know to exist. Before I met Abby, one of the things I was that, that was kind of like the pinnacle for me were finding the original eight tracks and reel to reels, even cassettes. This is the last Monkees album. You can see there was just the two of them. The only original Monkees album not to chart. It didn't sell at all. I would say this is probably worth $150 to $200. Whoa, did we go too far? You know, sometimes we wander. The, there's the practical side of me that always pops out and says, these records sit in a box for a year and I pull them out once a year, I look at it and I put it back and why did I spend money on it? You know, but at the same time, I do enjoy when I do flip through them and look at it and it's a visual aspect of it and I could pull the record out and play it, be able to find somebody uh, that, you know, that I love that also enjoys uh, collecting the stuff as much as I do is, is something that, you know, when I walk into the room, that's what I think about. The monkey room will get smaller and smaller and smaller as the family grows, but I think we'll always have at least a monkey closet. <laughs> <laughs> so. This afternoon we're going to be going over to Jim and Lana's house. They're a good uh, couple of monkeys fans that are friends of ours that live here in town with us and they're huge first generation fans so their collection is just massive. If we have the monkey room they definitely have the monkey museum. It truly is a monkeys museum. Uh, his collection is larger than ours. It's got a lot more rare items than ours. Hey guys I got some new stuff. I don't think you've Ooh. seen this yet. All right. It's pretty inspiring to, to see his collection. What you know, what a really, really good collection you know, looks like. We always like to rehash, you know, what's going on in the monkey world, you know, what new things do we have. Um, we're also really good about keeping an eye open for things that maybe the other one doesn't have. Both sets of us did grow up with the monkeys. It was just in different decades, you know, so getting their perspective on things, you know, is always interesting. Certainly we can spend an hour just looking at one unusual item or concert program and just flip through it and just talk about it and enjoy it. Learn to Weird. play like the monkeys play. Of course, on the first album, they weren't really playing, were they? No. <laughs> so it was easy to learn how then. Well, Joe and I were little kids, you know, in the MTV generation in the 80s. So I think we kind of bring just a little something to the table, you know, just being a, a younger generation of fans, you know, and I think they get a kick out of seeing that younger generation of fans and seeing, you know, our reaction when we see the things that they have that we don't. We're going to see David uh, perform this weekend at Geneva, Illinois. It should be a good show. One of the girls who helped found the Purple Flower Gang and gave us our name, she's going to be there. We have several friends from Chicago who will be there that we don't get to see all the time. So while it is a pain to have to go, you know, four hours, five hours early and set to hold your seat, you get that time to meet with the people that you don't see every day. Our road trips are just a scream. We just have we just have a lot of fun. We talk about it while we're going, and then we talk about it for years afterwards. The only real rules we have when we're going to a concert is we, we spend months planning these things, and that's half of the fun is what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And so we have a rule that there are no weddings, no funerals, no you can't die, you can't get sick. <laughs> they have absolute rules. You will go to this show. Whatever you do, the minute it's over is your business. This is how we celebrate our friendship. Well, we're unloading. <laughs> that, was that was the best unloading we've ever done. We get to go on weekend get-togethers, and while the monkeys might be the reason we're getting together, and it might be the glue that holds us together for that, we're there because we're friends, and, and we get to share our lives together this way. I never tire of seeing the monkeys or Davy Jones. David has, is one of the most energetic performers I've ever seen, and every show is different. Are you ready to make history? Um, he's the consummate showman. Um, when he's on stage, he's playing to everybody in the audience. He's very connected with his fans. Over the years, seeing us all the time and, and the interaction that we've had, 
you know, we've been to his house for tea. It's always fun to go to a show where you're friends with the person on stage. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, how are you doing out there? You okay? I look a lot shorter on television, I know that, yeah. It's great to see you all here, yeah. Are there any monkey fans out here? He's got it. 60, almost 61 years old and he's still got it. It's been really nice several times in the past that we have gone to his show that he has been kind enough to mention that we're there to see him. I think that sh that's his way of showing that he appreciates the, that we're there. All the guys came in from the Purple Flower Gang out there. Oh! <laughs> he crazy love. <laughs> We've watched him all these years and watched him go through all these changes and, and it's like pride in seeing a friend who's, who's succeeding. When the, the crowd is that enthusiastic and at the end they just didn't want him to leave. And, and it's a good feeling. I, it, it validates the way I feel. It hadn't been the four of us like that in a long time. The next thing is to figure out when we're going to do it again. We've been fans since 66. We've been on the road for 20 years. As friends, it, we're practically family. We know that time is short, so you got to enjoy. I mean, it won't go on forever. It never, you know, we're all getting older. So you got to enjoy what you've got. And, and I can't think of a better way to spend a weekend than with my friends and family doing something I love. And, and I'm, I'm so happy right now. It's been a good weekend. The show as a show has not changed my life. Being a fan of the show has changed my life greatly. It's allowed me to meet a lot of wonderful people and to share my life with those people and my interests. It's given me a chance to um, have a creative outlet where I can write and do artistic things that I wouldn't have had a chance to do otherwise. Life without the monkeys wouldn't quite be as, uh, as uh, interesting. I've explained to a lot of people, both professionally, just friends, even just casual people I talk to sometimes in the conversation, um, you know, that I'm a big fan of the monkeys. And it does most certainly take a special person, a special personality to really say I'm a fan of anything. Um, some people will say, well, I enjoy that show, but I, you know, or this show, but I wouldn't say I'm a fan of it. I'm not a fan of anything. I think it's just kind of your personality. I mean, really, you can't be taught to be a fan. It has to really kind of come to you. I really do believe it's kind of the essence, I guess, in a way, of who you are deep down. <laughs> <laughs>